there are plenty of loot guides out there that anybody can pretty much use. This is just mine. I highly recommend it for new players because it has an 82% survival rate and makes a minimum of 500k in like 20 minutes. It is super, super easy to do. It's always unlooted because nobody's ever doing it. It's Interchange Basement. Interchange Basement is full of so much densely packed loot that nobody ever goes to because everybody's scared of the dark and everybody's going up here to Rasmussen to get the um, graphics cards, tech light, PC blocks. They're going to Kiba to do things. But I'm telling you right now, it don't matter when you spawn into this game. If you're halfway, if you only got 12 minutes, you will never see almost any of this looted. Some things like one or two boxes might be looted, but this whole route is unlooted almost 90% of the time. The too long didn't read of this video is that you should just open up Map Genie, go on offline and find every single one of these duffel bags, weapon boxes, every single grenade case, every single one of these objects that you see in here. The route that I like to take, because oftentimes I'll spawn here at Scav Camp, is I'll go straight to Idea here. That puts me here at the bottom of the escalators. And then I'll run the duffel bag route through here, through escalators. I'll pass up this loot for just a moment to go down here and grab all these weapon boxes in this little square and grab this weapon box. And then I'll usually head back up and then hit these boxes, head off to the right, hit the duffel bag, the weapon box, hit all the items in this area. And then this is where I'll check my time. If I have three minutes, I am running to Xfield, the railway Xfield, without looting anything else. If I have four or five minutes, then I'll loot all the little boxes and caches on the way up to railway. Um, if I have 12 to 15 minutes, I will walk out the right side and head over to this duffel bags and items. And then I'll go over here and hit this ground cache, hit this weapon box. I don't even go into power plant. I just check the barrel cache behind it, this duffel bag that's over next to it. And then I run out here and I hit this weapon box and then everything else in between all the way to railway exit. Railway exit is almost never extract camp. It is so easy to go to and survive. And then you can also check all these ground caches and like the various different stuff that's out here. You will make so much money running this. Here is just a couple of examples of the loot that I get. On this run, I made 420K, got an RGN and a few nades and some meds and a couple of other items. But then I also had this run. This is pretty standard for if I have a big backpack and a big chest rig. This is 800K with two RGNs, a helmet, a few quest items and some M993. So here's an example of me doing it in an actual raid. Interchange, you can do nighttime, daytime. I usually do daytime, but it really doesn't make any difference. It's still gonna be unlooted down in the basement. You can do whatever you want to do. I hear an airdrop and there's a big reason why I don't go for airdrops as a scav because pretty much everybody does and it is a guaranteed death if you go for it. When I first spawn in, I immediately check the time. I see I got 23 minutes. I've got these items. I kind of want the ZB0114 key. I've been running a lot of factories so my survival rate's lower but you can trust me, I had 82% survival rate before, uh, before that. Um, but I've been running factory and just like having fun as a scav lately, but let's go get some money. We're going to go get to the basement immediately. If I spawn in the building, I go find myself an escalator as fast as possible. Right here is basically the start of our route. So I'm just going to kind of like go over here and check a duffel that I know about. Anytime I'm headed somewhere. I always look for extra items and stuff that I could pick up along the way. Now you can check the map for this information or you could just get used to like spotting it on the way. So we're grabbing an extra duffel this time. I'm gonna drop this machinery key and the Zyra because I don't care. What up homie? How you doing? I always stay as friendly as possible because uh, it's just not worth your time and energy to die and have to redo it again later. All right, let's head on down here and get our duffel route going. There are so many duffels on this run and duffels are absolutely goaded. We got the brawler mask. I'll take it just to be taking it. On this one, let's see, nothing. It's already been looted. I'm looking for player bodies as well as scav bodies in this area because there's a lot of player and like scav activity early in the raid, but it dies off later down the line. 
I pretty well pick up everything until I'm full and then I swap out and upgrade each one of my items as I go. I check right there for potential meds. I can get adrenaline, morphine, stems and stuff there sometimes. A golden rooster. Like I said, you get tons of uh, streamer gear. You're going to find tons of high valuable stuff just in the duffel bags like that. I'm always looking to upgrade my backpack or upgrade my um, tactical rig just to get more loot. Based on time, sometimes I don't go down here, but with 20 minutes, I kind of feel like I can do the whole run. We may be scraping a little bit of time, you know, but that's okay. I can't decide what my run's gonna be before I do it, you know what I mean? <laughs> But just these items through here is just like, this is already goaded. Like we're already doing just fine on, on cash. But like I said, I'm gonna literally pick up everything cause everything is a ruble. And when it comes time, I'll start dropping items for more valuable items. So right there, I'll get rid of the bandaid to get that item. That's what I call an upgrade. That's how I like to do it. Now, for the sake of consistency, I always pass up these two tents and come back and get them later because they're going to be on the way when I turn around because I'm going down here and then I'm double backing basically. So I always go over here and hit this truck. This uh, backside goes down and I go ahead and grab whatever's in here. We got another scav nearby it sounds like. CMRD I know is worth more than that. And the TT goes into the free slot. Pretty well I pass up things that I know aren't really worth it. Wilson cigarettes. This goes on that, so I'll take my Wilson cigarettes back. I'm always ready to get rid of my lowest value item for another item. Like as I see it being searched. Grab this box. Already more valuable, I'll take it. Most of your weapon parts is not really worth picking up. Like, for example, this SMR MK16. That hat's definitely not worth anything to me. Now we'll start running these boxes up here. There's a lot of weapon parts that aren't worth it. If you get used to using that hideout app, you'll know what's like a meta item and what's not a meta item. Anything that you would think is a meta item is worth taking because it's usually upwards of like 40K. So good idea to pay attention to prices on things. Oh, we can put the target ring on that. And then none of those. See, these are like garbage weapon parts that aren't worth anything. I always like to check the mags like this to see if it's a high value item or high value ammo that's in it. There's sometimes uh, scopes and stuff on that right there. What we got in this box? This is kind of cool. Um, I'll take it over this. Um, the fast is kind of cool, but it would take me getting rid of a couple items like that. Now, because the time is kind of limited, I'm just gonna mention some stuff. There's some weapon parts on the top of this and you can jump up this thing to get up there and check it. It's very rare that it's super valuable items, but like you can get sometimes scopes and stuff there. I always check my duffel bags. I can't stress how important each of these duffel bags are. Uh, they have so many streamer items, man. Like they're not always going to be streamer items, but they, I get, I get tons of streamer items. I got like all of the cap items, except for like two or three within like the first week of wipe, just from, uh, <laughs> just from like checking these duffels down here. It's friggin' insane. Hey, that's a high value, uh, one. Let's go for that. Let's add this to this thing. And then we got a spot for that. Now I can minimize that and put it somewhere else if we find other items to go in that spot. But anytime I can put a gun in a gun spot, that's what I'm gonna do. So this is a little two by two though, so I'm gonna keep it in mind. FMJ's garbage, PSTs are all garbage. Let's head over here. I love grenade cases. 
so bloody much. There's a chance for nothing. All right, cool. Ice pack. I'll take that over the Esmark. Um, this is actually a very valuable uh, grip, so I'm going to take it because I know that it is 12 ergo. And that is a high ergo grip for the AKs, which makes it meta. Pineapple juice. I don't. I do this just for fun, but I'll drink the juice and stuff that I find just because I think it's fun to watch the animations and listen to my guys slurping on something every now and then. I am running out of time, so I gotta like go, go, go. None of those are worth more than the other. For the most part, you'll get used to uh, knowing the value of items by doing this run because uh, you'll be selling a lot of the same stuff over and over and over and over and over. Ooh, this could be good. Oh, I'm definitely dropping the fast, I think. Oh, another salvo. Uh, oh, yep. We got some checks to do here. Um, I got to take off this. And I'll stick it on the shotgun. Drop this uh, to set this in here. To grab this, uh, the salvo over the CMRD. Even though I think the CMRD is worth more, I'm still gonna go for it. That bear, that uh, Harris pod is actually for the DVL. I think it's like a 15k. I don't think it's worth a whole whole lot. Check my time. We're at 14 minutes. We're doing great right now. I may be able to do the whole run. Always check right here. We see an AWL. There's usually high value little mods and stuff right there. Um, since I know I'm doing the full run, I'm just going to go ahead and grab this box. This is usually my last box if I only have like four minutes. Check here. We got an AK-12. It's not very valuable to me. And then we can add that to the RS. I'm actually going to add it to my that because I know that... I know that we're probably keeping this shotgun because of how many attachments it's already got on it. It would take a much higher value item for me to uh, worry about it after that. Um, Vogs are worth money. It's this that I'll get rid of. And then next is going to be that crappy scope, that uh, the one-time scope. We're looking at the ADP adapter. Not worth it. We're going to be dropping this very soon. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and drop it and the bomber. Oh no! Okay, we have to uh, we have to get rid of our shotgun. That means we're gonna be sticking all these extra parts on the smaller weapon here, and then I keep my spurt just because, and then I'm gonna drop the shotgun to get the AK, and then we're gonna hold on to the AK, and that'll be our weapon to shoot with, basically. So we got a nice little full auto. What's the quest for this? Gunsmith, I don't care about that. All right, my time is currently 12 minutes. So I deem that I have enough time to do the rest of my run. I don't need to go to railway immediately. So I'm gonna keep checking things and we're gonna keep on upgrading things. But as you can see, I'm leaving behind a lot of items. Like there's a lot of stuff that I'm just like not even really messing with. All right, just in case we do have some opposition, I'm going to make sure my guns are on fully automatic and that I have ammo for them and stuff. Good old PS ammo. Do, 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 do. Let's go check some of these caches out. I'm pretty happy with my loot, but I am a greedy little pig and will constantly check everything I can possibly check. Probably not going to hit these tool cases this time because I don't think their loot's going to be better than the things I have here. Somebody has hit this before. These are very commonly hit spots, so I'm just going to kind of go at my own pace right now. I like to take as much time as I can because if there is an extract camper at railway, they will usually leave around the two to three minute mark. So it is good to just kind of disappear. There's a few AI scavs looting in there. I highly doubt 
that this hasn't been looted. I hear the friggin' uh yeah, there's a chance it's not looted, I guess. Highly doubt it, but I'm gonna check just a couple. Yeah, that's it. I'm gonna call it. I'm getting out of here. I don't want any of these to be player scabs and shoot me in the head. I got too much loot on me for them to get it, you know. Let's check this out. Cap, not really worth it. All right, hit O, make sure we're good on time. We got 10 minutes. We got more than enough time. All these caches and stuff, like I said, they get, they get hit, so they're usually looted. But there's a lot of items that people don't know about, like this duffel here that people just miss. So I check it, keep moving. Salt, HDD, balaclava, not really worth my time. Let's figure out what the next item I'm dropping is. Probably the ZB0114 key, but let's be honest. It's a pretty decent key. Probably the spurt. But I don't know. It'd have to be a very high-end uh, two-by-one item for me to get rid of some of the other items. Now we're over here by this cache and what I call the butt rock because it looks like a butt. So this wasn't looted, but it's got garbage in it this time. Or it might have been looted, but like there's nobody wanted any of that. Yeah, it's been looted. Smoke, they don't want the smoke mask? I'll definitely take the smoke mask. What else is here? Anything else? Gas in, gas cans. That smoke's worth money. I don't know why they didn't want it. I'll take it. We have eight minutes, so I'm going to do the big long run over the short run and just hit everything that I know about, you know. At this point, we've hit the, like, lesser knowledge. Like, I know there's a cache here, there's a cache there, there's a pink suitcase, and then there's all the caches up that way. But like, I just kind of halfway do this area. Like I don't, I usually don't have a lot of time to do this area. So we'll be, uh, like I've, I don't think I've ever checked this cache. I literally just saw this cache on the map. So I figured I would, uh, I would check it since I saw it on the map today. But at the same time, I, oh, here it is. It's in this bush apparently. I've never checked this cache. I found out about it by looking at Map Genie today. Nothing. This cache though, I've hit several times. These caches are where you're gonna get like slicks and like lead X's and body armors that are really, 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 really good and stuff like that, so. I'm hoping to get a backpack out of one of these. LCD. Ah, there's just too much good stuff in here for me to pass up on LCD, though. It's like 35k, 25k, somewhere right now. I don't have time for the pink suitcase, but I definitely have time for all of the caches through here, so I'm just gonna run straight to the first cache and uh, head through it. So this is somewhat of a cache guide as well, because like this route right here is ran by a lot of people. Like, a lot of people will come in here, even PMCs, they'll take, like, a very basic backpack um, and then just run through here and then go for extract. Or they'll take, like, a chest rig and go for hole-in-the-wall extract. That's all they do is they just hit these, like, barrel caches and stuff. But I'll go in here as a scav, and sometimes they won't be looted, and sometimes, like, one will be looted, but the other won't be, and... Sometimes people miss stuff or drop other items. Like I've picked up people's troopers because I guess they found slicks or something right here. So people think they'll insurance fraud, but in reality, I find it. So these aren't looted this time. Oh, I love this helmet. I'll take it. Um, hello, friend. How are you doing? Hello. Hello, friend. How are you doing? We can do every other cache if you want to, man. You can have this cache, I'll take the next one. What's that? 
I'll, you can have this cash. I'll take the next cash. Oh, I'm just getting out. You take them all. Okay, bro. See, that guy don't even want it. See, that's what I'm talking about. These dudes, like, they'll run through here, and they won't even, uh... They won't even loot the caches. Like, like that guy, he just passed up all this loot. There's Bleach. Look at him. He's got four and a half minutes. Like, he feels like he's scared. Like, there's, there's not enough time to get out of here, you know what I mean? But there's, like, way too much time. Like, four minutes is a lot of time to get the railway from right here. So, more than enough time to check all the caches. So, but people pass them up for whatever reason. More loot for us. Oh yeah, look at it. This, <laughs> it's funny. It's funny how I got an example of that in the guide video of people not checking the caches. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's so funny to me. I mean, I ain't got really anything but this helmet so far, but this could be really good. What is this? Think better? AK? Eh. Not really. I don't really have a backpack. Like I'm I'm full, but I'm I'm okay with like upgrading stuff. Ooh, hawk. Ooh, I love both of those. Uh uh. I can't really justify getting rid of much. I have plenty of these. Ah, I love both those items. Right here's a little common rat spot. Always pay attention to that spot. But yeah, that's it. That was, uh, that's the, that's the run, you know? Let's go see how much money I made. And right here is extract. You just hunker into the backpack here and just wait for extract. Yeah, that's what we made. A few things about making the most amount of money. If you're really pinching for rubles here, you can take these guns that you found in raid and take off a whole bunch of items from it here. So like we can take off the carbine uh, or the stock, but leave the carbine. Uh, we can take off that charging handle, take off that extra ammo there, take off the under piece here. Uh, can I take off the top piece? Nope. Uh, and then I think the rest of this is like must have. And then you can go in here, hit filter, hit add offer, and then sell it for basically the value that everybody buys it for. And, uh, people will buy it. And then what I do is I take and make extra cash off of it by selling those parts to, um, good old fashioned mechanic and I, I net an extra almost 6k off of it so we'll do the same thing here real quick and then I net another 4k here and then filter by item sell sell it for 26.555 made another 4k I, I sold it for 30k when it would have sold for less kind of scummy but it works <laughs> For the new players out there, what I do is I check this price with mechanic. I'll right click it, hit filter, and I'll see that it's 25K here. And then I'll just sell it to mechanic because it's basically the same profit and I don't have to pay the fee on the flea market. But say something like this is 3K, I hit filter, and I see that it's 22K on the market. So I'm gonna sell it on the market instead of him for 3K. That's why getting to level 15 as fast as possible is so important. You make a ton more money just using the flea market in this way. So these are 19k each. They're currently 35 on the flea. I'll hit auto select similar and then click on them and sell both of them for 32,555. And I know they'll still quit. So here's that battle grip for 4k. We're going to see it. It's actually 12k. If I can make a 10k profit, that's when I will sell it on the flea. MP7 goes for quite a bit of money. Let's give it out there to all them chads that love it. And while I'm waiting for my trade offers to kind of open back up, I'll start checking prices and kind of organizing what I'm going to sell to traders and what I'm not going to sell to traders. So here we got 6K for it. It's 10K. It's not a 10K profit for me, so I'll sell that to the trader. 7K goes to 14K. I like it. I'll sell this on the flea. 4K goes to 11K. 
I will actually undercut the flea or undercut the trader here just so that I can get a higher value than what the trader would have gave me. And I know it'll sell quick. Filter 11k. We'll sell it. Sure. This I know is worth more than that. 44k. So here's some sells for the flea. This one goes to the trader. I think this is a trader sell. Yeah, this will be sold to the trader. Um, all right, so those are good. We'll go to Ragman. Filter by item. 4K is not worth me selling there. 11K, not worth me selling there. 27K. See, right here I make more money selling it to Ragman than on the flea. 26K, 26K. All of this will go to Ragman. Then filter to sell this. It looks like it's 36k, which is a 3k profit. I don't like it. We'll sell it here. We'll head over to Therapist. Check the Golden Rooster. 57 versus 52. I'll sell it more to Therapist. Buy 7k versus 14k. I'll try to sell it on the flea for 12k real fast here. I like to do 12555. Usually that's a good value. Uh, head down here, go for this thing, and we'll go 37555, add fell, and then the WB ZB key. I'll try selling it for 125 just because it's like you know, people buy keys. Uh, 14K versus 15K. I'm selling everything because I want to show total value of like the what I got basically out of this. 14K versus 15, almost 16K. Then I'll go to Prepper to sell grenades. We got 4K versus 18K. So we'll sell this for 75. Nice. Then 4K versus 16K. I'll sell this for 15, 555. Then we've got the Vogue for 2K versus 17K. All right, so I'm gonna sell the mechanic, these other items here, while we wait for them to sell like that. Let's hit Messenger, Let's see all, yoink. We already have five. Then we'll check my items and see how bad they're going for us. So filter by item. 26555, nobody's bought it yet, but somebody will. Somebody definitely will. Oh, there they go. Yep, like I just said, somebody definitely will. Filter by item. We'll go here, go for the last bit, which is 18555. That will sell in three, two, one. Got it. All right, so that's all the profit we just made off of that scab, which is 600,000. Uh, 608,398. That is not bad for just 20 minutes of, of running around, man. Like, you can't be mad at that. Like, that is a solid, solid scav run. We opened how many cases? Like, how many opportunities for helmets? How many opportunities for slicks and other different, like, attachments? I've gotten so many. Uh, just my scav alone here, okay? I get so many, like, awesome friggin' stuff like it, well not only get these i don't get these i bought those but like you get like crazy cool stuff just running running that scav and i love it and i will always run it and it is the best hopefully this has helped you out thank you guys for watching stay tuned for more hopefully you guys enjoyed the video peace